Hi everybody and welcome to my channel for another art journaling tutorial. I'm starting my spread um, with collage papers that are all in blue shades because I wanted to create a kind of a bluish turquoisey background. I'm working in my at the moment most loved art journal, the cheap one from the action store. It's almost a square format. I think the pages measure around 20 by 20 centimeters. Um, it's a bit similar. It looks a bit similar um, to the Dilutions sketchbook. But of course, the paper is just not the same. And um, it's also quite thinner. But I really love this journal for art journaling. Um, it has some very thick paper in it, which works um, surprisingly good with watercolors and all other mediums I have tried so far. But best I love it with collage underneath. So I have my, uh, let's say my standard surface for my art journal pages because I often start with a collage background. And then I also often add a layer of clear gesso on top. And that gives you a really nice surface to work on. The papers I'm using here are different kind of papers. I have some handmade collage papers, jelly prints, and also some uh, stationary papers uh, from a stationary paper pad. Um, I don't know where I got these from. Um, it, these are quite old. The main things I'm using here are handmade and jelly prints and I try to use thin papers. I don't like thick papers for collage. And if you're interested in how I make my collage papers, I have several videos already up on my channel. Um, I will link the playlist, I think in the info cards or either in the end cards. I'm gluing the papers down with the Tombow glue stick. I love this one. I had never a piece coming off. It's not messy. Um, you have time to to rearrange your your paper if you don't like what you have done. Um, yes, it's just my favorite. And if you let it leave it open and it dries, the, then only the cap dries and you can pull off that skin then and the glue stick is not ruined. Um, I think I will speed up the rest of the collage just a little bit because my video is quite long, almost half an hour, and I try to to make it a little bit shorter. When I'm done with the collage, I will add a layer of clear gesso on top. I'm using the liquid hex gesso and I um, use a silicone brush and the catalyst blade to smooth everything out. My gesso is dry. Um, that does not take a lot of time. And now I want to stamp that leaf image from our pencil marks 7 stamp set. To the bottom of this page and I have a piece of foam underneath my pages to make sure to get a better stamp impression. Um, stamping over that clear gesso and the collage might be not perfect as you can see it here, especially um, with the clear stamps. They are a bit more sticky than rubber stamps and over an acrylic surface it's always a bit tricky. But as this is just my background, I don't really mind. I don't want to have a perfect stamped impression. I want to have just some texture going on. And um, if you want to have 
perfectly stamped images, I recommend stamping to some tissue paper and then adhering this like a collage on top of your page. Um, I will just redraw some of the leaves later with an acrylic marker. But as I said, I will go on top with more color later. And it is not important that these images are all perfect. Sometimes it's even better if you have something imperfect going on on the background because um, it's a bit, uh, yeah, I think more of a surprise which textures you get. And um, it's the not planned things are often more interesting than the things you plan out. The markers I'm using here are from Ardix. Um, they're acrylic markers with quite a bold nib. Um, I think it's about a centimeter wide and I really like them for my sketchbook. I usually don't use them for art journaling, but here it's the perfect size to just color in some of the leaves. The marker needs a little bit time to dry and in the meantime I'm preparing a background paper. It's already, um, it has already some paint on it. It's a leftover paint paper which I get when I do something with acrylics. I always use a fresh white paper as my paint palette and then I will just smear the rest of the paint all over the paper and sometimes I clean stamps on it and stuff like that. And these papers are the most gorgeous collage papers for art journaling. And today I wanted to have some pink and I didn't find a pink collage paper in my stash. So I picked this one and added some neon pink. I will now let this dry and in the meantime I keep on working on my spread. Um, I will do some more stamping using the ticket stamp from our Mixed Media Mark stamp set. Uh, this stamp set is... 10% off during April. It's one of the stamp sets of the month together with the Mix It Up number one. So um, these stamp sets are amazing. They have so many different stamps uh, that can be used for background stamping. And um, I think if you like these kind of stamps, get them now because once they are gone, we will not restock them. Uh, we already restocked them twice, I think. And it's time to change to change something in our um, yeah storage space, I would say. Um, yeah, I will now add in some color with acrylic inks. If you don't have acrylic inks, you can use any other medium, for example, watercolors or brush or powders, or maybe acrylic paints thinned down with water but they are more opaque so I would not recommend that um, but watercolors or any kind of water-based uh, inky medium will work. I think over the clear gesso you could also use distress inks. I'm just playing with the paints. I use shades of blue and turquoise and the inks I'm using are from Liquitex and this should be the Liquitex turquoise. I try to not cover everything. I try to bring in some light and dark areas um, to get kind of a moody, moody background.
To bring in a lot more contrast, I'm using some white ink and I really uh, highlight up some areas on my page and that wide range of tonal value brings in the interest. Don't be afraid of having a high contrast on your page because usually it increases the interest. The background has to dry now and in the meantime I will stamp some flower images onto that background paper I have made and I will just stamp several of these flowers and then cut them out and then I will decide which ones are going onto the page. I will speed, speed up this part as well because it's not very exciting I think and that can save some time. I was missing something on the page and I decided I want to have a border around that spread and I'm using a stamp also from the same stamp set from the pencil marks number seven and I'm stamping this border all around my page. Um, I will soon push my journal down so you can see everything a little bit better and I'm using again some washi tape to mask out the edges. Uh, of the of the page so I don't stamp outside the edge. I'm super happy with the frame and here I'm adding some color splatters in neon pink because that is cohesive to the flowers I want to add and I'm also using some white ink to make some splatters. I always love splatters. They create some depth on your page because they are sitting on top 
and that gives the illusion of another layer. I'm using not acrylic ink for the white splatters, um, I'm using the um, Yako Accra Taylor Shave in White. It's my favorite white watercolor. It's amazingly opaque and perfect for some splatters. Um, if you know that you don't want to go on top with other wet mediums because this is a watercolor, this will um, we wet once you go on top with something else. My flowers are cut out and um, they are a little bit boring because they are completely pink. And I decided to color in the center of the flowers with an acrylic marker. This is an acrylic marker from Ardex. I love them for my sketchbook. I really often use them. And um, I don't often use them on my art journal pages because they have a brush tip and usually I only make patterns with the with the acrylic markers like dots or dashes and there it's just better to have a Posca paint pen. The Artex are also not as as opaque because they are more liquidy because of the brush pen. So I have to add two layers to get everything covered. And I think I started with a yellowish color and here I'm coming on top with a green and I really love how these flowers turned out. I will also add some texture to the center of the flowers using a Posca paint marker. Um, I will add some dots uh, with a white marker that will just bring in even more texture and interest. Now it's time to adhere the flowers and to give them a stem. I'm using a black watercolor pencil to draw the stem onto my page. Um, and therefore I just dip the nib of the pencil into water so I get really an, a really intense pigment um, off the pencil and gives me really dark and bold line. I'm now going to adhere the flowers as the paper is quite thin where I s I've stamped them on. I'm using also that glue stick I have used for the collage. If I have uh, more thicker papers for my focal images, I usually use a wet craft glue to adhere the elements because that works usually a bit more easy when you have a kind of a stiff paper. but here the glue is strong enough to hold everything in place and the flowers don't pop up from the background. And I really love how these are, um, are going onto the page because they have some turquoise elements in them. They, they almost melt into the background and I think that's a really, really nice and interesting effect. Instead of a simply stamped uh, sentiment today, I'm writing some words with just some messy script and a Posca paint pen onto the stamps of the flowers. As these were th so thin, I, I didn't like them so much and I thought this will make them, will give them more, more volume to hold the big flowers on top 
And it's also an interesting style element, I feel. Yes, and that was my page for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's one of my favorite pages because I really love the colors and the, the background texture. Uh, you will find photos of, them, of the page on our shop blog today and there is a link in the video description and here are some more videos you might want to check out. I wish you a lovely rest of the week. Bye!